Hi guys, it's time for another World of Tanks review and today it will be starring the T26 E4 Super Pershing. Uh, I've had this tank for quite a while now, uh, for five months I think. Yeah, I got it in, yeah I've had this tank for five months now, I got it for Christmas and now it's May so yeah that's five months. And uh, no, it's nearly six months really. And I believe this tank is the best choice for a premium tank in the game. Not because it's an spe especially good tank, but uh, because it's the premium tank that gets the job of a premium tank done the best, which is earning credits. Uh, the reason why it does that best is because, well, let's have a look at the tech tree. Here you can see the T26 E4 Super Pershing, and um, at the moment it costs 6,120 gold. But uh, we've got a special at the moment, which means that all uh, tier 8 premium tanks, oh no, actually all tier 8 tanks, um, have got a price reduce of 30%. So uh, you get a bit of a false impression, but usually this tank costs 7,200 gold. And uh, then... Let's have a look at the other T8 premium tanks, uh, the T34. Usually this tank costs 10,250 gold, so that's that's over 5,000 gold more than the Super Persian costs. Let's go to the Russian tree. Here we've got the IS-6 at tier 8, and uh, usually this costs about 5,000 gold more as well than the Super Persian. Um, the French. <laughs> And again here, it costs uh, 5,000 gold more. And that's the same for the Louvre. Uh, the Yak Panzer 8.8 cm, uh, no, the Yak Tiger 8.8 cm, usually costs about 10,000 gold, I think, so that would still be um, 3,000 gold more. So, the Super Pershing, uh, the Super Pershing is the cheapest tier 8 premium tank. Uh, of course you get cheaper premium tanks if you move to lower tiers, but uh, they just don't earn you the same money as uh, the tier 8 premium tanks do. So, uh, if I were you, if I'd get a premium tank, I'd get a tier 8 premium tank. And uh, if I'd get a tier 8 premium tank, I'd get a super Pershing. The first reason, it's cheaper. The second reason, you make, uh, in the end, you make a lot more money with it than with the other tier 8 premium tanks. Uh, the reason for that is because the Super Pershing is a medium tank and for other tanks that you can get a tier 8 are either tank destroyers or heavy tanks. And first of all, of course, for other tanks are a lot more expensive, but then the shells of a Super Pershing, I can just quickly show you this, cost, uh, we go to service, they cost 255 uh, credits a shot. So that's pretty cheap considering this is a tier 8 tank. And uh, the gun isn't all that good, but it gets the job done, and the shells are very, very cheap. Uh, so, yeah, th they cost 250 credits about, and uh, the, t the shells of most of the other tier 8 premium tanks cost around 1,000 credits a shot. So that's quite a difference. Uh, there is only one exception, and that's this FCM 50T because the shells of that cost around 250 or something like that as well perhaps about 300 and I'm, I'm not really sure because I haven't got the tank but it uses nearly the same gun as the ARL so uh, the shells aren't all that expensive either uh, but uh, the Super Pershing not only has cheaper shells but it's also got cheaper repair costs because it's got less HP than the other tanks in its tier, or the other premium tanks, but it earns more money uh, than the other tier 8 premium tanks. So, so in the end that means that this tank makes the most money in, or the most profit in all the game. And uh, that makes it uh, to the best premium tank in my opinion. Um, yeah, I said the best premium tank, or the best tank at making money, which doesn't exactly mean that it's the best tank at being a tank, because it isn't. It just it isn't a very good tank, to be totally honest. Uh, let's just have a quick look at the stats. 
1450 hit points, that's quite a lot, especially considering this is a medium tank. So that's a very decent amount of hit points. Then the weight is 50 to 52 tons. So uh, that means that this tank uh, outweighs any medium tank in the game. Now it's the heaviest tier 8 medium tank in the game. Uh, so you might think that you'll be able to do great ramming in this tank, but you won't. Because uh, your engine power just isn't good enough. 500 uh, horsepower. That's really that's like kind of that kind of really sucks. Uh, a 500 horsepower engine driving a 52 horsepower machine that leaves you with a power to weight ratio of uh, about nine. Let's see, it says down here. Yeah, the Pacific power is 9.84. That's really really bad. Uh, let's see the um, yeah the VK. Uh, 3002D for instance, okay, that's a pretty uh, pretty fast tank, but it's got 18.13 uh, specific power. So the DB is, uh, the power to weight ratio of a DB is twice as good as the power to weight ratio of this tank. So that means uh, this tank is really, really unmaneuverable. Um, it says the top speed is 38 kilometers uh, per hour, so that's, uh, yeah, that, I guess that's kind of true. But uh, you never really reach that top speed unless you're going down a hill, uh, because you um, because your acceleration just isn't good enough. Um, you usually you'll be happy to reach about four uh, about thirty kilometers an hour, and uh, you won't usually won't get over that moving over a flat plane. Um, however, you reach these thirty eight kilometers uh, even going down a very slight slope. Um, but speaking of slopes and uh, going up slopes or hills or so on in this tank is a real deadner because it's just so super slow. Uh, you'll be going at about fi between 5 and 10 kilometers an hour up those hills uh, and you'll just be shot at from every corner and uh, every side of the map. So uh, yeah, be careful about going up hills. And the traverse speed, 32 degrees per second. That's a uh, pretty damn good, especially considering uh, the bad power to weight ratio. So this tank turns, yeah, it doesn't turn slow really. Um, but the traverse speed, the track traverse speed, is the only not slow thing about this tank. Because, like, all the other stuff that's got to do with speed is kind of really bad. Like, the turret traverse speed is 24 degrees per second. That's really, really slow as well. So, um, the um, this track traverse speed will help you if you um, if you've been circled by a scout because you can turn your hole along with your turret, and then that will help you a lot if you're being circled. Um, but as I already said, that's the only fast thing that this tank has got. Um, and now we come to the armor, and the armor is kind of the really interesting part about this tank. It's got 102 millimeters at the front of the turret, and 178 millimeters at the front of the hull. Now the thing is, these numbers, strictly speaking, aren't really very correct, because you can see you've got your normal turret armor up here, and you've got the normal hull armor, and they've got uh, these numbers. But then you can see there's uh, extra spaced armor welded on the front, and uh, that's another whole pile of armor that enemy guns have to penetrate. But it doesn't say anything about the spaced armor here. It's just for um, yeah, they just list up the normal default armor of a tank. But then you get these extra armor plates, and let's just have a look at the armoring in the hull. Look at this. That's a normal armor. And then there are two extra plates welded on front, and they're not all that thin. So, uh, and then look at the angle. That's a 45 degree angle. So, that makes this tank impenetrable from the front of the hull. Uh, look at the low glaciers. It's got at the upper part of a, at the upper part of a low glaciers. There are two space armor plates, and at the lower part there's only one spaced armor plate. Uh, if you're shooting at this tank from the front, 
Mind you, not shoot at the lower part of the lower glaciers because um, there's nothing behind this little edge here. You're just your bullet or your shell might penetrate the space armor, but there's nothing behind it. So this part of the tank, just right down here, hasn't got a hitbox. Bear that in mind. The turret armor on the front, however, is not quite as satisfying as the uh, armor of the hull. Because well, we've got this gun mantle and that's kind of fairly strong. It's nothing like a T-32 or something like that, or a T-34. So, you have hits penetrating even through the space down on the front and then through your gun mantle. So don't count on your gun mantle to protect you, but it's still there and it gives you an extra bit of armor. Um, speaking of extra bits of armor, of course, there's this, uh, this, yeah, this space armor well done on the front, but you can see uh, it's only one kind of layer of space armor, not two, as on the whole. So that makes the turret um, the kind of a weak spot, the major weak spot of this tank. Because, uh, like, you know, all the other American high tier tanks have got kind of a relatively weak hull armor and then a kind of a impenetrable turret armor. And with this tank, it's just the other way around. There's no way you're going to get a penetrating hit through the hull armor, but you stand kind of a 50 50 chance uh, at the turret armor. But still, uh, your turret armor is really, really good. And um, tier mm, tier seven tanks and lower will ricochet from every single spot on this tank. Actually, this tank has got the best armor of any tier eight tank in the game. But however, to balance that, Wargaming gave this tank quite a uh, quite a few weak spots. Uh, the one that gets on my nerves the most really is this little machine gun. Because I keep forgetting that it's there, because when I first bought this tank, this little machine gun emplacement wasn't there yet. But then uh, some guys complained that this tank was armoured too heavily if it wants enough weak spots and so on. So then Wargaming added this little machine gun down here. And um, in close combat, a tank with enough gun depression will easily hit and penetrate this machine gun with every shot. So, uh, you have to be pretty careful about that machine gun, and you can very, very easily forget that it's there, because, you know, you're just looking at your tank like this, and you just don't see it, if you're in the game. Um, then, that, but that's the only weak spot on the hull that's, like, kind of a real problem. Of course, uh, these little hatches up here, or uh, other hatches, or periscopes, or whatever, uh, they're kind of weak spots. But look at the size of them. If you hit those, that's a real miracle. So uh, I wouldn't be aiming for them if I were fighting against a super pushing. Uh, I would be aiming in a in a close combat situation. If my gun depression was good enough, uh, I would aim for this machine gun emplacement here. Or you can penetrate this tank at the whole upper turret. Because as you can see, the space armor there isn't any space armor anymore up there. So if you can hit this tank above the space armor, you'll penetrate it very, very easily. You'll penetrate it especially easily if you hit this commander's hatch or, uh, no, I think this is the commander's hatch actually and this is some other hatch, probably the, I don't know, well, if you hit one of these two hatches anyway, it doesn't really matter who's in that hatch, is it? Uh, does it? So, um, yeah, that's the second place to penetrate the super pushing and the third one which is a bit more risky but it can help you in some situations are these little spots here because as you can see there's no space armor there either so um yeah you can penetrate the super pushing if you get a good shot in there i especially re recommend you to fire at these parts of the turret if the super pushing is um kind of a bit diagonal to you because then the hit zone gets a lot bigger there. But as I already said, it's risky because look at the angling there. That's not easy to penetrate. But the armor here is a lot weaker than on the front because look at the side. I'd say this part of the turret already counts as the side. And look at the side armor. 
76 76 that's really 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 bad um anything can penetrate that 76 millimeters of armor even a tier 4 tank can penetrate that so uh just don't rely on your side or rear armor to protect you because everybody's gonna put shots through that and everybody's gonna happily put shots through that because everybody knows something easily penetrate this tank from the sides and rear so always keep your uh, the front of your hole facing your enemy and the front of your turret as well just face the enemy straight on or you could angle your hole a bit i guess but um it's not really necessary because everything will ricochet from this hole here but you have to be careful if you're meeting tier 9 tanks or so or higher like even tier 10 tanks because their guns will just they don't really they don't really care at all about your armor on the turret i mean your whole armor is still a bit of a challenge for them but your turret armor they're just gonna slice through that turret armor every single shot so i wouldn't be relying on your armor if you're fighting a uh, tier 9 or 10 tanks in single combat so now we'll come to the gun and uh, the gun is the second major drawback of this tank uh, beside its speed uh, i just I have a look at the gun and separate the caliber doesn't really matter because it doesn't really tell you all that much and uh, the rate of fire 7.32 rounds per minute that's a pretty damn good rate of fire and uh, if you've got crew skills and equipment on the tank that make this reload time even better like me like i've got uh, the, a gun rammer on this tank and improved ventilation too so that makes this gun fire really really fast uh, i've got at the moment i've got a reload time of six seconds per round so uh, that means effectively i can fire 10 rounds per minute that's a really really good reload time uh, just you shoot around every six seconds so that's really good if you've got the equipment and like brothers in arms and so on but the big problem with this gun is the penetration 170 millimeters of average penetration that's not a lot i mean most of ta most of the tanks at the tier of a, at the same tier of a super pershing uh, don't have that much armor but it's angled then and um this gun just simply won't cope with with that armor it's just it just will ricochet uh, you will just have to aim either for weak spots or you'll have to uh, come round the rear or sides of a tank which is pretty difficult because the tank isn't very maneuverable so um the tactic to go for is aiming for weak spots and that takes us to the accuracy of this tank 0.38 millimeters uh, 0.83 meters on 100 meters accuracy that's it's average it's nothing special but it's not particularly bad this will allow you to aim pretty precisely at the weak spots of enemy tanks in close combat uh, you shouldn't be sniping with this gun it's kind of more of a brawling gun really but you can yeah you can be fighting at medium to close range which means which means uh yeah you can kind of go up to i would say 500 meters distance uh, if you're further away than 500 meters from your target that's going to be a bit difficult to hit it but uh 400 500 meters that's all right with this gun uh yeah we left out the damage uh 240 HP damage with an average shell that's uh, all right it's nothing special again but it's not really very bad it's just okay and you can get up to 300 HP damage so yeah it's not bad but it's not very good it's just kind of average for tier 8 medium tank and the aiming time 2.3 seconds that's nothing special either but it's okay it's just it doesn't feel slow really uh, you haven't got any problems with your aiming time at least i haven't and uh yeah that's um yeah that's all to the stats of the gun and i think the gun it isn't an absolutely abominable gun or something like that but it just isn't very good it gets the job done but it's just not very good and um 
if you're looking for a tank that's got a, a good gun, you know, with which you can do a lot of damage and so on, this tank isn't the right choice. Uh, and that kind of gives you a bit of a drawback with earning credits because the way World of Tanks decides how much credits you earn in each battle is by looking at how much HP damage you've done. And uh, although your DPM is very, very good, a lot of your shots won't penetrate your enemy. So uh, in the end, that's kind of a bit of a drawback with this tank. There are people who use, uh, the, uh, use premium ammo on this tank and they say... Like that, you can still do a plus when you use premium ammo. Like, one shot costs you 4,000 credits. Of course, you could buy a lot of these shells in advance when they're cheaper. So, you've often got specials where they only cost uh, half the price, something like that. Then you could buy a lot of them for 2,000 credits each. And then, yeah, you could uh, use them. Or, of course, you could buy them for gold, although I think that's a bit of a waste. But... This tank used with premium shells won't be as good a farmer as with normal shells. The penetration gets a lot better. It's 194 millimeters to 323, so that's a really, really good penetration. But uh, I, I mean, the normal armor piercing sh ammo is okay. As I already said, it's not great, but it gets the job done. So. And you get a lot more money out of that, so I would stick to the normal arm piercing ammo. Uh, yeah, then the rest of the stats we've got left is yeah not really very interesting. 380 meters view range is pretty good. Uh, I've got coated optics on this tank, so that gives me extra 10% view range. That means I've got. Uh, all in all, I've got 400 and, uh, 420 meters view range about. That's very, very good. That's the view range of a M48 pattern free. So that's, uh, yeah, that's not bad. It's actually pretty, pretty good. And then you've got the standard 745 meter signal range. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty decent as well. So, so much to the stats. One last thing I want to mention before we see some gameplay is that uh, I told you that this is the best choice for a premium tank in the game uh, at the moment that is true but uh, there is a tank I would say is better than this one and that's the type 59 um, because the type 59 it's got a pretty similar gun to this tank so the gun's just as crappy really but it's a lot faster and it's still got very good armor so uh, if you've got any chance to get to the Type 59, I would prefer that to this tank. And uh, there are rumours that there's going to be a new Tier 8 Chinese Premium tank in the next update, which is 8.6. So I'd wait till that comes out, because perhaps it's, it even is the Type 59 or a similar tank to the T50, uh, Type 59. So, uh, because the Type 59 just is absolutely great. So, uh if you've got a chance to lay your ha get your hands on a Type 59, uh, get that instead of a Super Pershing. It's it's a bit more expensive, but not it's not worth mentioning really because it's just a difference of about 500 gold or something like that. So uh, yeah, and that's more or less it uh, for the time being of uh, stats and so on. Let's have a look at some gameplay. So the first battle I want to show you, strictly speaking, isn't a real battle. It's just a uh, a training, uh, a training fight or training battle that uh, my friends and me did to test the armor and the gun of this tank. So uh, yeah, you see the Type 59 is firing at me, and uh, that's my friend General Denny, and he fired at my uh, upper glacius, so he didn't penetrate me there. And now he fired at those tubes up there, and obviously he penetrated me. So he's getting his next shot ready. And uh, there he ricocheted, you can see he ricocheted from my, uh, from, not from the space diamond, but from my gun mantle. It penetrated the space diamond, but it didn't ricochet from the gun mantle. And uh, let's see, where did he shoot now? Ah, look, he hit that little uh, hatch up there. Now he hit the other hatch, so as you can see, uh, the Type 59 can penetrate me with every shot if he shoots 
at the top of my turret there again. And uh, the penetration of a Type 59 is just about as bad as the penetration of this gun. And to just in a moment, you'll see how bad the penetration of this gun actually is. Uh, yeah, see my friend got a shot at me in that, uh, yeah, there in that edge between the gun mantles. And, yep, yeah, there he hit my uh, little machine gun. So, you see, we penetrated very, very easily as well. So, there he penetrated me again with a machine gun. And now I'm just going to quickly show you how absolutely bad the penetration of this gun is. Uh, there. Okay, that's not all that uh, embarrassing to, to uh, ricochet off the upper glaciers of a Type 59 because it's just pretty heavily armoured. It's got 100mm and that's a very good angle. But now we will shoot at the lower glaciers. And uh, although that's handled very well, it isn't uh, armoured all that good. So all the same, I ricochet with every shot. I won't get a single shot through that lower glaciers. And uh, yeah, that just again gives you an idea how bad the penetration of this gun is. Uh, however, you can see um, when I aim for these weak spots up here, like the, um, the uh, commander's hatch, I mean, I ricochet once, but usually you penetrate it very soon. And you can see the accuracy is easily enough to cope uh, with hitting those kind of small weak spots up there at close range so uh, yeah we're kind of finished now now we're just gonna derp around but you know just kind of yeah not really we're not really doing anything serious anymore so uh, let's watch a real battle so it's an encounter battle on Weinberg and uh, yeah the matchmaking is really really good there, um, there are only four tier 8 tanks in the game and uh, as you can see, I'm platooning with my two friends, General Danny and Red Bull Forest. So uh, we're, yeah, we're all, uh, we're like uh, the main part of the top of the, like we're all at the top of the list. So that's, yeah, that's, that's good. Uh, I'm heading down this uh, heavy street here. Like I call it the heavy street because usually the heavy tanks go down this road, uh, but. The thing is, the Super Pershing, you can play the Super Pershing a bit like a heavy tank because it's just that slow and it's got that good armor. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't really play like a traditional medium tank. It plays more like a heavy tank, really. Although the gun isn't good enough to be the gun of a heavy tank. So, uh, it's kind of something in the middle. It's very, very difficult uh, to, it's kind of difficult to decide, yeah. So, uh, as you can see, Quite a lot of our team, of the, of the guys in my team, are trying to capture the base. And uh, in the meanwhile, I um, we're trying to deal with this AP7 here. So he's got very, very strong front armor, but there's this little weak spot, this little machine gun emplacement on the top, uh, uh, on his top. And yeah, I'm as you can see, I'm penetrating him there every single time. And um, they thought this kind of a lucky shot through the IS because. Uh, yeah, the chances, I guess the chances of penetrating him there stood 50-50 and now I got him on the low glacier so obviously I penetrated him and um, I can just see how important it is to know the weak spots of your enemy see like I on purpose shot for the, uh, for the turret of the tiger, that tiger P because it's the weakest place in his armor um, yeah, and then there's an AMX 12 T there so uh, right now I try to hit him but I miss um, and now I'm concentrating again on the that tiger P so uh, yeah now I'm gonna aim for that little uh, because I'm close enough now I'm gonna aim for that little commander's hatch in the top of the turret because that is the weakest spot in his armor and oh no I actually uh, don't I uh, hit a side but that's okay too because the sides of the tiger P are just made of paper so uh, yeah and now there's that Suicide T44 rushing into our base, but of course that was necessary for the enemy team because otherwise he would have captured it. And uh, obviously he dies, but uh, he dies by me. That's good. There. So that's my first kill. And uh, yeah, now my friend and me, we're gonna go for that Type tw uh, 59. And 
Yeah, I deal out a whole pile of damage in this game. Uh, I don't deal that many kills. My friend does a lot of kills by uh, for Type 59, but I do a whole pile of damage. So that's just the reason right there why you shouldn't fire this gun on the boot. Because so just simply this. Uh, yeah, there again, like I didn't aim 100% and I missed. Uh, firing this gun on the move isn't all that great. Although the gun stabilization is pretty good, it just, uh, yeah, the move, uh, um, the accuracy just isn't good enough. So, the gun doesn't jiggle when you move all that much, but it just isn't very accurate. So, yeah, my friend gets his third kill, and uh, yeah, that uh, T29 hasn't had enough yet. So, uh, yeah, we're going to see to him next. And, yeah, we're obviously going to win this game because uh, we've got all of our 48 tanks left against two tier 7 tanks. And uh, speaking of tiers, uh, that's the thing this tank's best at, dealing with tier 7 tanks and lower, because they've got no chance of penetrating this tank's armor, but this gun can easily penetrate their armor, usually. Uh, except if it's a black prince or something like that, that's a bit of a problem, but usually, uh, yeah, this tank copes very, very well with tier 7 tanks and lower, because, um, yeah, tier 8 tanks and higher, uh, the, the armor, for one thing, is just too good, and then their guns are so good, but your uh, armor, you can't 100% rely on your armor anymore, and another problem is that a lot of tier 8 tanks have got really really accurate guns so they can even from medium range hit uh, the top of your turret right here and uh, yeah, that uh, can be a bit problematic so uh, if you've got a chance um, always uh, if you've got a chance always decide to fight for uh, lower tier tanks uh, yeah, there's, I've uploaded a gameplay video about that. Uh, I think I called it uh, Super Pershing, the Noob Killer, or something like that. Uh, because yeah, that's just what it is. It's just uh, yeah, it's it's that's the thing it's best at. Uh, but you can't always rely on that because I ricocheted off the side of a Black Prince there. So uh, all the same, my friend finished him off, and uh, we won the game. Um, yeah, the enemy team wasn't very good, but I gave a pretty good account of myself. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can do the same in the next game. So, now that we're back in the garage, let's discuss battle tactics, crew skills and equipment and so on. Uh, concerning battle tactics, um, yeah, I think they're pretty easy in this tank. Um, you haven't got the speed to be the first one for the uh, scene of battle. Uh, you're usually coming with a second wave, and that's good, because this tank isn't. Now that's where this tank is best in the second line, because in the first line, or if you push forwards too far, uh, and you get yourself isolated from your teammates, you can very, very easily be uh, circled by other medium and light tanks, and they'll just shoot you to a pile of scrap, because. Yeah, this tank just hasn't got the ability to counter a carousel maneuver just because it lacks the speed and the maneuverability. Uh, yeah, so either you should uh, fight, you can fight in the first line if there are a lot of your teammates around you to support you. Otherwise, I would fall a bit back because the accuracy, accuracy is good enough to fight from a certain distance. Uh, you can play this tank at a medium range as well, like as a half sniper, but I wouldn't really recommend that because uh, you will miss quite a few shots. Uh, the kind of maps this tank prefers uh, are maps like Ensk or Himmelsdorf, like city maps, because this tank loves to be in a street and just push down that street because uh, it can't be outflanked that easily and your enemies will have to shoot at its frontal spaced armor plates and uh, yeah that's not uh, very uh, that's not very uh, easy to penetrate or not very easy very hard as nail really so uh, yeah that can that's very very positive for this tank to be in city maps or in a street or so on uh, if you're in a close combat situation it's useful when you aren't shooting at one but reloading, it's useful to 
toggle your hole to the sides like always pressing A and D because uh, that will make your hole kind of move like this and kind of jiggle a bit and that will make it far far more difficult for your enemies to hit that little machine gun down there it will make it nearly impossible um, it's pretty difficult to do the same thing with your turret because your turret turns just too slowly so uh, yeah I just keep facing on to the enemy with your turret in that case and just uh, yeah just hope that they don't uh, don't hit those things up there and then uh, another thing that I already mentioned but I have to mention again is it's just that decisive in this tank is to know the weak spots of your um, potential enemies so uh, it's useful to study uh, weak spots of your weak spots of your enemy tanks uh, there are a lot of websites where you can do that I've uploaded quite a lot of weak spot videos as well uh, because you have to know uh, you have to really know where to shoot with this gun because the penetration just simply isn't good enough. And so that's kind of all. Another important point is that because this tank is that slow, you should think carefully about where you want to go on the map because, uh, as you can see in that battle that I just showed you, uh, like I was switching around, I, I was running around for battlefield a lot with this tank, and uh, this tank just isn't very good at it because it's that slow. So if you can avoid that, just try to stick to one flank because, and you know, try to choose your flank. Uh, try to choose your flank carefully because you're kind of committed once you've chosen. Because yeah, just too slow to change flanks usually. Yeah, so that was more or less it concerning tactics. They're pretty easy. Just uh, yeah, another thing is another thing. Perhaps is I said that already as well. But uh, you can angle your hole in a kind of a diamond shape. But I wouldn't angle it all that much. Because otherwise you're wasting the potential of your um, of your frontal plate here, frontal armor plate. It's just angles about this angle, and um, yeah. Then, uh, but that isn't really all that necessary because uh, your frontal armor is that thick anyway. Nobody will penetrate your whole armor from the front. Um, I would recommend you, if you angle your tank to an enemy, to angle it in this direction so that machine gun is on the far side of your enemy, not like this, because that will make it a lot more difficult for your enemy to hit your machine gun, and uh, that machine gun is just the major weak spot, which you can see just all the space down was cut away around it. Um, yeah, then next we'll come to cruise girls. As you can see, I've activated accelerated crew, crew training because... Um, yeah, these uh, because I'm not a huge fan of converting free uh, experience into free experience on premium on um, elite vehicles. I just think it's too expensive. So uh, yeah, I've activated accelerate crew training, and uh, yeah, you can see I've got uh, Brothers and Arrows as his first perk, and then I've got I'm learning repairs at the moment. Uh, what I did is I first of all learned uh not the skills yeah i first of all learned repairs for all my crew and then i swapped it to brothers and arms and then i just learned repairs again uh you could swap repairs for um six cents on your commander i would do that if i were you uh you don't have to learn brothers and arms because this is a medium tank and i usually wouldn't recommend brothers and arms on medium tanks but uh, on this tank, because it plays more like a heavy, really, I would get Brothers in Arms. But you don't necessarily have to get it as a first skill. You definitely need repairs because repairs are absolutely essential on this tank because attract uh, super pushing is a dead super pushing. So, uh, yeah, make sure to get repairs. And then I would swap repairs for a sixth sense for the commander. I'll do that as soon as I've got 100% of repairs here and uh, yeah firefighting and camouflage I wouldn't get either of those skills because uh, you don't need them fire isn't a big problem in this tank I mean if an enemy gets around you you're done for anyway uh, so uh, it's no matter if you can fight the fire or not and if you're on fire you'll use a fire extinguisher so firefighting isn't really all that important camouflage this tank is a b pretty big so camouflage doesn't really make all that much sense either and you don't really play this tank in the sniping role anyway so forget camouflage uh, 
Yeah, then, yeah, as I said, six cents, and I would get recon later on as well, because uh, the view range is one of the major uh, pros of this tank, and if you can buff the view range, that would make this to a pretty effective spotter as well. So I would get uh, recon too. Um, then for the driver, now that's for that's for a uh, gunner, isn't it? Yeah. So for the gunner, again, um, repairs of course, and maybe brothers in arms. And then I would get a uh, snapshot. This tank isn't very fast, but all the same, it's, it always helps. Snapshot's always a very good idea. And, um, yeah, then later on, I mean, for other skills and perks aren't all that great, but, you know, you might get uh, Dead Eye or Armorer. But, uh, yeah, I get Dead Eye next, I guess. Um, then, for the driver. Then, um, yeah, I'd get Smooth Ride, and then after that, I'd get Off-Road Driving and Clutch Braking. Uh, both of these skills are very important for the... I'd perhaps even ignore Smooth Ride and first of all get uh, Off-Road Driving, because, well, the traverse speed on this tank isn't all that bad, so Clutch Braking isn't that important, but the speed isn't good, so i definitely get Off-Road Driving. Uh, after you've got repairs and maybe brothers and arms of a driver and after that I get smooth uh, smooth ride and then I probably get a clutch braking a controlled impact is not that useful really because as I already said the tank just is too slow to do ramming um, as for your uh, radio operator situational awareness is as recon for the commander very important because it just buffs your view range and your view range is yeah just for ma one of the major pros on this tank um signal booster i guess wouldn't be all that bad either otherwise yeah the other skills aren't on perks aren't all that important really so uh yeah just you know if you've got time uh you can get them but uh, the important one is really situational awareness then, last of all, we come to the loader. Um, yeah, I don't like the skills and perks of a loader, as most of you should know by now. But, yeah, ammo racking isn't really a problem with this tank at all. And uh, you never really change ammunition. If you decide to use premium ammo on this tank, intuition might be a good idea. Otherwise, uh, don't bother about this skill. Because you will never be firing HE shells on this tank. Because they've got 45 millimeters of penetration. You can't even penetrate the rear of most of your enemies. So just forget intuition. Except uh, for if you're using uh, premium shells. And adrenaline rush, well, yeah, I guess I'd get that next. But um, it's not that great either because 145 hit points not re very often get down to that low amount an amount of hit points so yeah uh, but i guess this is the most uh yeah the best choice for the loader okay last of all we're gonna talk about the equipment um yeah i'd get first of all i'd get the medium caliber gun rammer because uh yeah again as with a view range your quick reload time is the best thing about this tank and if you can buff that even more like if you've got brothers in arms uh, improved ventilation and the medium caliber tank gun rammer that will make your reload reduce your reload time to about six seconds between shots and that's really good so uh, yeah definitely get that and then i get improved ventilation as well because for one thing it's very very cheap because this is a medium tank and then uh it plays like a heavy tank, so improved ventilation is useful. And then, as a third skill, uh, as a third equipment, uh, the choice is kind of more or less yours. Uh, you could get toolbox, because repair is essential on this tank. You get coated optics. I've got coated optics, because, um, yeah, coated optics just, again, extends your view range, that's important. Or... You could get, of course, a binocular telescope. It depends on if you want to play this tank stationary or more on the move. Uh, probably coated optics is a better choice. 
Uh, and the third choice you've got is the medium spore liner because uh, for one thing it's very cheap on this tank because it's a medium tank again and then it's very necessary because your tank is very slow it's a big target from the top look here and it's got nearly no armor on the side and rear so what's that mean are he's gonna love it so uh, and the spore liner definitely is a good idea you could might uh, Instead of getting instead of getting ventilation, you could perhaps get uh, the spore liner and or the toolbox, and then just get the uh, coated optics as well. So uh, I perhaps um, yeah, it's just for choice of yours. But uh, I definitely get uh, I would choose if I were you, I'd choose between the tank gun rammer, uh, the toolbox, coated optics, uh, the spore liner, and ventilation. Uh, yeah, so then I've got one last advice for you that I just remembered when I was talking of a spore liner and that is be careful about artillery, always try to get into artillery cover when possible because yeah, artillery just will pick on this tank like uh, yeah, like nothing normal. So uh, yeah, be prepared for that. Otherwise, I think the Super Pershing is the best investment in the game. Uh, it's just, yeah, if you want to buy gold, if you want to buy a lot of gold, buy a Super Pershing for it. Because, uh, yeah, it's just the best investment, according to my opinion. Wait till update 8.6, when the new tier 8 premium tank comes out, I think. Yeah, I'll try to review that. Yeah, I propose that you just decide then. Otherwise, I think the Super Pershing is a very, very good... Uh, well, it isn't a very good tank, as I already said, but it's a good me uh, premium tank. And uh, although it isn't very good... It's uh, a lot of fun to play and I really recommend it. So for all of you who are looking for a farming tank, uh, yeah, definitely check this one out, especially if you're on a budget. Okay, so thanks for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.